uh, there's a global imperative to address issues like uh, the fact that the population is getting older, richer, more urbanised, you've got the impacts of climate change, you've got scarce, finite, costly resources, you know, everything from uh, your usual uh, fossil fuels through to, through to water. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the emerging economies which are exacerbating those demands. And that necessitates a, a transition to a low carbon economy. And what we've seen is a huge amount of money is required to assist in that transition. In Europe alone, to meet the 2020 uh, legislation um, goals, you're looking at somewhere in the region of 2.7 trillion euros. Uh, and annually, at the moment, somewhere in the region of 250 uh, billion dollars is being spent in the clean tech area, and that's everything from uh, low carbon, energy efficiency, energy storage, water, uh, waste and transportation. Uh, and, and that figure is set to rise to somewhere in the region of 650 billion dollars by 2030. So um, that's, that's a huge ask for global capital. The call on capital has happened at a very inopportune time uh, for, for, for the world's uh, money markets. Uh, you've got a, uh, the, the, the slowdown in the global economy and the, the problems that we had from the financial crisis and indeed the Eurozone debt crisis which um, is, is the backdrop for this call of capital. And then looking forward you've got Basel III and Solvency II which is going to impact um, the way that banks lend money and the way, the way that pension funds and insurance uh, companies invest in those sort of uh, large-scale capital projects. Um, so it's going to be a testing environment um, and I suppose I'm minded of Ernest Rutherford who said, you know, uh, when we have no money we have to think and that's really the call on, on every aspect of the, uh, the, the, the business at the money markets to um, embrace the new paradigm. So from the bank's perspective it'll mean changing the business model so that they understand first and foremost um, about sustainability because of course banks are large businesses and then they need to embrace uh, things like the carbon market um, or the feed-in tariffs and understand those renewable energy credits, how they actually impact project finance so that they can adjust their models accordingly to, to reflect that. Um, I think the VC sector has been extremely active in, in clean tech and I think that there are lessons to be learned for the banking sector generally. Um, that's really on the banking side. From the point of view of policy makers, it's incumbent on them to assist that transition, to make sure that the environment is conducive to uh, bankers being innovative and creative in the way that they raise capital. And then I suppose the subset there would be uh, the rating agencies. I think at the moment the rating agencies need to um, focus on understanding the clean tech sector so that they can make proper calls and assist investors in their investment decisions. So, because I think there's a, there's a deficit of understanding across the whole market and um, investors are wary of putting money into projects that they perhaps don't understand as much as they, they could. I think Ireland is very fortunate, first of all, from the point of view of the fact that we already uh, host a number of world-class companies. I'm thinking of the likes of Gay Electric, uh, Mainstream, uh, Open Hydro, WaveBob. Th these are companies that are recognised throughout the world and they are uh, indigenous to, to, to Ireland. So there's a very strong uh, reputation for, for technology. We also have a government who are engaged in embracing 
this transition to low carbon economy. And uh, they are very open to facilitating uh, the creation of an, of an environment where business, and, and that's financial business, and also the, um, the actual technology side of things can, can thrive. And we've already seen that through the changes that they've made in the finance bill with regard to um, carbon credits and, and forest carbon. Um, and they're, they're not afraid to break new ground. Uh, and I think that's, that's very positive. Um, and I think that uh, lastly, um, in, in that w Ireland is blessed with uh, a, a very young, educated workforce, and there have been strident um, efforts to expand the understanding of the green sector. I'm thinking particularly of the postgraduate certificate which was launched last year at DCU uh, and the upcoming Masters which is uh, following on from there and the stuff that they're doing at, at, at Smurfit and, uh, and other areas. So uh, I think what you're actually going to have from an Ireland PLC perspective is uh, an educated workforce very comfortable with green finance both from the um, technology side but also from the financial side and I think that that forms a very strong base upon which to build Ireland as a green, clean tech hub. Thank you.